Feminists are man-hating, matriarchal, angry women who want special privileges over men and can't get any dick. Did I mention that they also hate men? Because, you know, all feminists are women, right? <laughs> yeah. Hello, hello bookish friends. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Lois, this is Lo Chan Reads. And in today's video, we are going to be answering the question, is radical feminism good or bad? is largely inspired by a book I recently finished reading and that is Feminism Interrupted by Lola Olufemi. The author is a British writer and activist and she also does a lot of organising with the London Feminist Library. This book was published in 2020 by Pluto Press and it is one of the eight books in Pluto's Outspoken series. I mean you all, this series, come on look at these titles. They are giving everything that needed to be gave the way I need this series. The whole purpose behind this book is to disrupt typical mainstream feminism, the type of feminism that we are all judged by, and show that not all feminist politics is the same. When we think about feminism, we generally only tend to think about women, and we think that these women all have exactly the same universal views. We rarely consider the complexities that exist within feminism. We don't acknowledge that men and gender non-conforming people can be feminist and we are also largely ignorant of the fact that there are many many different types of feminisms. For example we have neoliberal feminism which is the mainstream feminism but as well as that you have intersectional feminism, decolonial, Marxist, environmental, um, sex positive, um, there's even crunk feminism, carceral, I'm sure I'm missing others, sex workers rights feminism. Um, there's many, many different types of feminisms out there and a lot of the times they do conflict one another. For example, you have carceral feminism, which is all about um, bolstering the policing state and giving the police more power. And that acts in direct opposition to abolition feminism, which seeks to defund the police and reduce their powers. Another point is that throughout history, there have been different waves of feminism. So for example, the first wave, which was all about women's suffrage and the subsequent waves that came after that. Even though when you think about feminism in waves, it does kind of paint a very broad picture and it doesn't allow for much nuance, but it still proves that not all feminisms are the same. In fact, the introduction of this book, Feminism Interrupted, speaks on this conflict. There's a really good chapter in the initial pages of this book that I wanted to read. It says, there was no coherence or consensus on accepted principles in the feminist movement. If anything, it was defined by conflict. The decision to practice a radical feminism was crucial because I became aware of how it separated those wanting to create a new vision for the world from those merely wanting to climb the rungs of power. When we hear the term radical feminism, a lot of people will think about the woman that I described at the very beginning of this video. We think angry, aggressive, man-hating, feminazi, misandrous, hairy legs. That last one might be true actually. But I've seen so many videos on YouTube, on this platform, of women talking about feminism in general, not just radical feminism, with so much disdain and antagonism. There was one woman who portrayed that typical angry figure that I was talking about in her video. And there was another video of this white woman who was talking about how feminism seeks to destroy the traditional conservative family unit, the whole nuclear man and woman with kids situation. She views feminism as an attack on that and all these other erroneous thinkings that are circulating this platform. It is mind-boggling to me that people who have experience with negative stereotyping on account of their race, their nationality, their religion, they know the harm that it can do. They've experienced negative stereotyping. They then go and do the same thing and stereotype all feminists as angry man haters. This is something that particularly men do, but not just men. And it's such a narrow minded view. It really aligns with the easy narrative that they want to believe 
regardless of what anyone else tells them. Now that we've established that not all feminisms are the same, we can now move on to answering the question, is radical feminism good or bad? And in order to answer that question, we first have to acknowledge the plurality of radical feminism. For example, TERF feminism, or T-E-R-F, stands for Trans Exclusionary Radical Feminism and is an example of one type of radical feminism that I do not support support that's fine this is because it reinforces trans hate in the wider community which ultimately results in such consequences as less legal rights reduced access to health care and also a higher risk of fatally violent crimes being committed against trans people on the other hand the far left-leaning feminism that is spoken of in this book is a radical feminism that I do support. There are 10 essays in this book that range from reproductive justice to trans misogyny to art and creativity to Islamophobia to the sex workers rights movement and the central theme that is running throughout this book is that society is structured in such a way that it privileges some and exploits others and only by dismantling these systems of oppression can we collectively work towards building a more inclusive and equal society. Those who benefit most from these systems, typically white, financially well-off, so middle to upper class, that sort of thing, cisgender, heterosexual, monogamous, most usually men but white women as well, they are the ones that are most likely to defend our current institutions even though they do exploit more vulnerable people and they're more likely to view the dismantling of it as a threat and far left extremism. What we need to realise is that radical feminism, especially when it's intersectional, is completely and utterly different from neoliberal mainstream feminism. The latter only cares about women as a symbol, so how they are seen. They want to argue on the politics of does makeup and porn and topless models empower women instead of how can we end poverty? And they campaign for having the same rights and the same powers as men within an already flawed society. Whereas radical intersectional feminism is all about challenging society on a more structural level. It fights for the material needs of the most vulnerable groups of women. It looks at how our institutions exploit people, such as the institution of work. And this is something that can benefit men too seeing as lower class men of colour are more likely to be exploited by these institutions too. So in conclusion, is radical feminism good or bad? The answer is it depends which feminism. But on a serious note, it is my view that any radical feminism that adopts an intersectional approach that aims to make room for all, including society's most vulnerable groups, is a good thing. So. And finally, I just want to end off this video by again encouraging you to read the book Feminism Interrupted by Lola Olufemi. It's a fantastic read and it's only 145 pages as well. So it's a short read, definitely one to add to your TBRs. It is brilliant. But that's all I have for today's video. If you made it to the end, Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to give me a big like before you leave. And you can also subscribe to my channel if you're new for more bookish content. I am planning on releasing a more feminism inspired videos soon. So definitely subscribe before you leave if you don't want to miss those. If you've read Feminism Interrupted, please let me know your thoughts on it in the comments. I would love to hear from you. But that's all for today. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time and goodbye. Thank you.